Okay, we'll start with an opening statement from Coach Yale, and then we open the floor to questions. Yeah, um, another Power Four match up for us. Uh, this will be our fourth one. Uh, right now we're two and one when it comes to Power Four teams. No, one and two when it comes to Power Four teams. Uh, just so happened that two of them are in the top five, uh, top ten. So uh, this team, uh, we respect them just as much and uh, excited to we didn't plan this game. This is a CCACC challenge, uh, but nevertheless, excited for uh, both Toddy and KK to go home. Uh, Coach uh, Joy is also from the Carolinas, uh, played at Duke. Um, so it'll, it'll be a great homecoming for, for those players. But um, I think this is a, a game that both teams probably really want to win. Uh, for resume standpoint, so um, I expect it to be a competitive feat uh, for 40 minutes. Questions? As I said, a pretty busy week mm -hmm. last week. What do you think you learned about your team in those games? Yeah, I mean, for me, like I've I've been learning a lot about my team. Yeah, one, I don't I don't care how long you've been coaching. Every team is a new team, so. Um, just understanding that there's so much to learn from this particular team. We just had a meeting and we talked about, you know, minute management and um, lineups that work for us and setting people up for success. Uh, yesterday was the first day I gave out roles to my team and saying, hey, okay, now this is what we need from you. This is what you're good at. This is what you're not so good at. Um, that's all a process, and we're able to, and actually we're ahead because we've played uh, three P14s. And so we, get, we got exposed, and we had a chance to kind of look and see the things that we're good at and the things that we're not so good at. Uh, so I learned uh, too much to just say in this setting, but... But I am learning about our team, and they're learning about each other, and our coaches are learning about uh, the team, and everyone's learning about me. And so it's just a, a just a it's a it's a teaching and a learning and an exploration grounds uh, for Team Fifty right now. I'm curious when you have those conversations mm -hmm. about the people's roles. Yeah. Um, I imagine those are probably kind of difficult telling mm -hmm. people you're good at this, you're not good at this. How do you handle this? Well, here's the thing. Numbers don't lie. So, you know, we, we back it up statistically. Uh, that way there are no emotions. And most times they don't disagree. You know, we don't, in our roles, we tell them, you know, these are the things we need them to do. And then these are the things you need to stay away from. And most times they agree because we've already showed them in film uh, what they're not good at, and um, they're either going to buy in or they're not. And that, that is the, onus, the ownership that they have to take as a team. You know, I think, I know coaches, our job is to, you know, give them the game plan and, and create the culture and, and set the standard, but they're, those are the people that have to live up to it. And so once we give it out, they don't only get their roles, they get everybody's roles because they need to know what each other's strengths are and weaknesses are as well and then play off of it. So usually it's well received and they're almost anxious to get it. You know, young people want structure. They want to know what I'm cool with them doing, what I'm not cool with them doing, uh, what I think they're good at, what I think they're not good at, backed by, you know, the statistics and usually they roll with it. Coach, how do you fare this game? Obviously, the, the other games you played were on neutral sides, but mm -hmm. this, this time you're going to an away side. How do you prepare and fare for NC State for a team that obviously just dropped out of top 25, yeah. but just recently went to the Final Four last mm -hmm. year? How do you prepare for a road game against a tough environment and a tough team? Well, I mean, hopefully, I mean, I know we've been going to neutral sites, but hopefully that us just being away from home prepares us because when we're away from home, it's us versus everybody, and we kind of have to lock in and hone in. Obviously, we had a good crowd in the Bahamas, but so did UConn. You know, uh, uh, when we went to France, uh, we had a good crowd, but so did SC. We're going now into a sold-out environment, and so um, our energy has to be right. They're going to have to depend on each other. They're going to have to be close. 
uh, knit with each other uh, while they're out there, especially when they're away uh, from from me. And so we're going to work a lot on, on that noise control. It may not be as much noise, but just understanding, like, is you all on the floor and, and you all have to perform. Uh, I brought this up with KK, but I don't know if you know this, but she's shooting 94% from the free throw line this year, and, mm -hmm. and Tati is shooting 85%. When you have guards out there that are shooting that high from the free throw line, how comfortable are you kind of feeling in late game situations, knowing maybe you're only up or two, a point or two, mm -hmm. but you need a free throw to go up three or four points? How comfortable do you know having girls like mm -hmm. that? Even some of your, your transfer girls that yep. are shooting high from the charity strike, how comfortable do you know knowing your girls are shooting that high from the free throw line? Well, I'm for sure if, if it's – KK shoots all of our techs. <laughs> so if, if someone gives us a tech, KK shooting it. I'm confident with her uh, going up to the line and then obviously Toddy as well. I mean, we're a work in progress. So if I'm being transparent, sometimes I don't know what I'm going to get out of them. <laughs> we have to just continue to work on those things and put ourselves in situations that we may be in, in the game situations uh, like SC, um, fi figuring out how to have better starts. We have not had good starts versus two of the three Power Four teams uh, versus um, Boston College we did. But, um, you know, we're talking about SE and, and UConn, they're elite. And so uh, we didn't have good starts, and then we had to use a tremendous amount of energy to get back in the game. And when I say good starts, I'm talking from a field goal shooting percentage. So that's when, as a head coach, you have to look at yourself and say, okay, what is going on? Why are they? <clears throat> are we taking too quick of a shot? Are we not? Are they not confident in the in the look that they need? And so, yesterday we had a lot of time to just spend with ourselves and not worry about NC State. And then today we'll we'll focus on that. But I think it's just a, a learning process for our team as we just continue to go through experiences. I want to ask you about uh, Sarah. Um, you kind of just talked about. If I'm bringing a freshman here, that yeah. means they're ready to yeah. play. She has tremendously grown over the last mm -hmm. seven games of the season. What are you seeing from her, not on just the playing court, but in behind the scenes, you know, working out, um, in practices, watching film? What are you seeing from her that's making her stand out maybe compared to some of your former freshmen yeah. over the years? Well, with Sierra, I mean, she's built for it. She wants to play uh, at a high level. Uh, she's serious about uh, being her best self, and uh, but she's also human, and she's also uh, going through growing pains, and uh, we have a lot of expectations for her. So when most times when you're a freshman, you don't have to worry. You could just sit on the bench, and everybody will talk about why you didn't play, but really you know in your heart you, you're you not ready to play. Uh, but her situation is different. We're expecting her to play. Sometimes she starts. Sometimes she comes off the bench. Uh, but the expectation is still the same because uh, we believe in her. And so it's a balance of, um, you know, encouraging her, but also challenging her to be better than she was the day before. Uh, because I, I believe that Sears is one of the best freshmen in the country. And so uh, Sears has been putting in the work. Like I just left the gym and she was in there getting up shots before practice. Um, and so I think – you're going to continue to see her play well as we continue to improve. That's only the first week of December, but um, have you, is there anybody that has, I guess, not, maybe not surprised you, but you've gotten more contributions from than you expect, than I guess on the other side, that more, anybody that yeah. you've expected more from maybe just hasn't gotten there yet? Well, no surprises as far as contribution is concerned. I mean, we definitely need more from uh, Rich. You know, we believe in her a lot. Uh, so we need more from her. We need more from Ayana Thompson. Uh, we we really believe in those two players, and uh, we need to increase our bench. And so, honestly, I'm open to anybody really stepping up and showing what they're capable of. I thought Rima had some good minutes in the Bahamas. So maybe if we can uh, continue to pour into her and find opportunities to play her, uh, she will come along. But definitely uh, those two, Rich and Yana, we need them to step up. They're experienced. They know what to expect. Um, and I don't think we're going to be able to get through SEC play uh, without them and without, you know, Christine continuing to grow and Star continuing to grow. And, um, you know, Maddie just figuring out her role and how with this team and how to be impactful uh, 
uh, like I said, it's just a growing process and for all of them. But those two, when you ask that, like immediately popped in my head. Like if we can get them to uh, play like we know how they can play, I think we'll even be more of a force to be reckoned with. Any more questions? Thank, Thank you. Guys. you.